All right, so I just take these off and put them directly the same way on this guy. All right, so if your AC unit is not kicking on, um, there could be several reasons, but this is probably one of the more common ones. And um, this one kind of comes up out of the blue. So the outside unit is the condenser unit and it has a big fan on it that uh, has a big motor and that big motor takes a lot of current to kick on. So there's a device called a capacitor that um, gives it a big, uh, you know, juice of energy uh, to kick on. So if that goes bad, then that fan might not be able to start up and kick on and then you don't get AC, you don't get the cooling. Um, you can still get your inside air, that blower will turn on, it's just not cold air. So um, it's really a fairly simple fix. It took, I don't know, five, 10 minutes tops, uh, even if you haven't done it before. So I'll go through, there are some key things to know uh, one's for safety as far as you know before you pop out that access panel the other one is knowing what type of capacitor you need to buy to replace it because there's a lot of different types and the physical size of the capacitor doesn't really mean much so um, i'll show you how to pick out the right size capacitor for you to, to do a replacement as well as um, some of the the symptoms of it so you know one of the telltale symptoms is if that ac kicks on and your lights dim in the house uh, significantly or you know differently than you're used to that could be a sign that the capacitor is going bad and it, it starts to lose how much capacity that it can hold and um, so then it does a current draw it actually draws the voltage down of your entire house um, another sign would be that that outside uh, condenser unit if the fan um, starts to kick on and then it stops um, so you know it doesn't get up to full speed and it and, like trips off that could be a sign of the capacitor um, not providing enough energy to actually fire it up. Um, and then, you know, the final sign would be that you just hear it humming. It's not actually starting up at all. And that means that capacitor is not giving any assistance to get it on. And that motor will just hum there and that will actually destroy uh, that motor with time. So, um, again, it's an easy fix. For me personally, it saved over $200 to do it myself. The part's like 20 bucks. Um, it's not a very expensive part. But that was with a discount. So without the discount, supposedly from the HVAC company, it was going to be over three hundred dollars um, of savings that um, you know I did by doing it myself. So hopefully this saves you guys some money. And uh, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and see some more content. Hey guys, this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater Channel. Today, I got to replace the capacitor in my AC condenser. Uh, because it's low so now I do pay for a company to come out and do annual checks on the AC and the heat and um, you know I found that it's a worthwhile investment because they they check everything they'll replace my um, my big air filters and that kind of stuff as well but the key is that they go through and they check things like pressures and temp drops and capacitors and I would never get around to it and you'd hate to find out that all of a sudden uh, your AC doesn't work one day. So they came out uh, a couple days ago and they found that the capacitor on the big unit downstairs is below spec. So it's supposed to be a 7.5 uh, UF uh, capacitor and it measured like a 6.9 UF. So it means it doesn't have as, not, um, as much capacitance as it needs. And so pretty soon that AC fan won't be turning on and obviously if it doesn't turn on I don't have AC in the house so the fun part is they quoted $215 to replace it and I've replaced capacitors down on like the the furnace you know on the on the furnace blower and I knew that they weren't that much money and that was actually a discounted rate I think the standard rate was like 330 bucks or something so I told him I said you know thanks for checking on it but I'll I'll fix it myself. So I looked up uh, the spec that I needed. I looked, went online and you know, lo and behold, I found the capacitor on Amazon. I'll put a link out there, but you know, you'll have to look at your um, specific uh, model to see. Now you can just pop up in the service panel that I'm about to do, and then you can look at the numbers on there and I'll show you what numbers matter. So this one's a 45 slash 7.5. 
Uh, so that, um, I think it means it's a dual run. There's also single run ones. But so those two UF numbers are what matter the most. And that's what you want to mimic. Now the size can be different. You know, some of them might be taller, shorter, fatter, skinnier. That's fine. But uh, those numbers are what matter the most. So let's take off this service panel. Obviously, you're dealing with high voltage. This is 240 volt stuff. So you want to make sure that you disconnect uh, power. I already turned off the unit on the inside, so it shouldn't be requesting any power. But um, even so, we should still make sure that we disconnect the power completely from it so that we don't uh, get anything on there. So pull this guy out. So that's the breaker basically if you don't have one of these outside you'll have to go into the um you know your breaker panel and turn it off but most of them have a disconnect here at the wall so then you follow that cable and that goes into this section it's normally this corner thing and they either have a 5 16 or a quarter inch is the most common so let me um get those taken off and show you inside there So mine happens to be 5 16 but like I said, some of these might be quarter inch. Alright, so that slides off. You can see this capacitor here. And looks like I got a smaller one. So this one's a quarter inch driver. So this just has three, so C, Herm. All right, so I just take these off and put them directly the same way on this guy. Okay, so that capacitor cost, I think it was 22 bucks. And you can see how long it takes to do this job. So not to knock HVAC techs at all, because obviously what you're paying for is the immediacy of the fix. Most of the time when you're calling them, it's because your air doesn't work or your heat doesn't work and you need it fixed right away. So I get that. And you know, the guy had the part on his van uh, when he showed up so he he would have fixed it that exact same day but if you're a little bit handy and you know it did take a couple days to get this part in so if it was broken broken i'd be out of ac for a couple days and uh truthfully with uh the family um here with little kids i would have paid the money to get it uh fixed if i needed it fixed right away
now that's all fixed let me turn on my air after I put this disconnect back in all right so we will turn it on and see if it works So obviously it works and like I said it took me about I don't know five six minutes of, uh, of time and I saved myself a couple hundred bucks so it's something you guys can do too and I uh, hope you like the channel uh, stay tuned for more